Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and today in this video we will be talking about NBomber and .NET based load testing tool which is especially very very handy while we are going to be testing our modern applications. So with the help of NBomber we can not only test like a simple HTTP application like this one, we can also test WebSockets, MQTT for IoT based application and also we can test the Redis based application as well and not only that we can also test the event driven architecture as well. So it's going to be testing the push and pull architecture based application and it's much much faster to do it. And the most important thing to understand about the NBomber is that it is much much easier to set up in our machine and if you're going to be familiar with .NET the coding that I'm going to be showing you right now is going to make much much sense and it's going to be very very easy for you to set up. They also have got something called as NBomber cloud which is something you can run directly on their cloud and there are many different plans available as you can see over here. Well, as I said, I'm going to quickly jump into the NBomber coding and I will show you how you can easily write that up. And as you can see here, this is the application under test that we are going to be taking this time. It is basically going to be a .NET based application and it is very, very straightforward application as well. As you can see, there is a product API for this application. So if I execute uh, with the product ID as two, it's going to give me this particular value. And if I put three, this is going to give me different value as you can see. And this is the API that we have got over here, which we are going to be doing a load testing. So basically, we are going to be load testing this .NET application using NBomber. I can also show you how you can do the web application testing with NBomber in our upcoming videos of this particular series. If you really like it, you please put a comment below in this particular video. But for now, I'm just going to straight away start writing the code over here. So basically, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write an NBomber uh, HTTP test and I'm going to create an unit test, which is going to be of an X unit test. I'm going to create it over here in a new window. And once I have it, what I'm going to do it is I'm going to go ahead and add the dependency for the N bomber. So that's going to be very straightforward as well. Let's go and search it over here. And you can see that there is something called as N bomber HTTP. You can also see there are many different versions of N bomber available for the data, for the contract. But the one which we're going to be looking for is going to be for the HTTP. So I'm going to go ahead and install that over here. So I'm going to start writing the code over here. But before that, first of all, I need to create an HTTP client just in case so that I can start using the HTTP client. Uh, and then I'm going to create a scenario. So in basically in the NBomber world, every single operation that you do is going to be pretty much dri driven like a scenario and with a step, like how we write in the actual test scenarios. That is the one greater advantage that the NBomber has got by default over there. But now to work with scenario, we need to install another package. So if I just go over here in the manage NuGet package, you see there is something called as NBomber over here. So I need to install this package as well, along with the HTTP plugin that we have got with the NBomber. And once we have that, now I can just go ahead and type something called as scenario. And you can see that the scenario is going to come up and I can hit control dot to add the scenario over here. That's all. So this scenario, I can now perform this operation like create. And here I can give the name of the scenario. So basically I'm going to be performing a, a HTTP load testing. So I'm going to say HTTP uh, load test, something like this. And then I can pass an asynchronous method over here. So I can just say asynchronous of the scenario uh, context if I wanted to, and then I can put it something like this. And because this is going to be an asynchronous method, I need to also make this as an async test method as well. So in order to do that, I'm going to do something like an async of task, because that is a good practice that we need to follow. And then we can start writing the code over here. So you can see that this is more like an probably like a scenario that I'm going to work with. And over here, I can start creating something called a step. And then I can start writing each and every step which I'm going to be performing to create the HTTP load testing of my system. So I'm not going to write the step this time, but I'm going to keep the code a bit simple so that you can see that how easily you can write the code and how readable the code is all going to be. So I'm going to say HTTP uh, request is equal to HTTP dot create request 
and over here i'm going to say i'm going to perform a get request and the get request which i'm going to be doing to my system is going to be the one that i just showed you over here just this guy all right so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it over here and i wanted to perform a get operation but with a header if i wanted to pass in so the header is going to be probably uh, content type as application uh, json uh, i think that's what we need to pass in that's all so you can perform any different operation as well so you can pass the header and if it is a post operation then you can also pass the body if you wanted to you can also pass the with json body so everything is going to be something that you can pass in from this particular http operation over here and once you have got that you need to then get the response just in case to see if that particular response is what you are looking for so you can perform any other operation out from this particular value uh, which you can get it from the scenario later on so i'm just going to say var await of an http dot send and i can pass the http client which i just created which is this guy remember so i'm gonna pass the http client and then i need to pass the http request which i have just created which is this guy as you can see over here so once i have that i'm then gonna return the http response to the scenario as you can see over here from here so you can then get that particular value and then you can perform the rest of the operation so that's all i'm gonna do for now and then i'm gonna do the final thing which is going to be registering this particular scenario with n bomber runner so in order to do that i'm just gonna say n bomber runner dot register the scenarios i mean you can have multiple different scenarios during the execution and currently i only have one scenario so i'm just gonna register that scenario and then i'm gonna perform a run operation that's all so if this code is going to make sense to you, then you are already halfway through of whatever discussion that we are going to be doing in this particular video. So all you have to do is create an HTTP client and then you just create a scenario and you can have multiple different steps. But in our case, since I have only one step, I'm not really going to add any of those things over here. So I'm just going to create a request for this particular API and I'm going to send the request and then I'm going to register the scenario with the n bomber runner and then i'm gonna run it that's all i'm gonna do and i will quickly run this code and show you how it is going to look like so in order to do that i'm gonna go to my hyper terminal and then i'm gonna go to the tryout and n bomber http test this is the one which we just created and now if i just do a dot net of test execution you will notice that it is going to start the n bomber 5 test execution for us over here you can see that for the first time it is going to do a warm-up operation which means it is going to warm up the whole server with all the uh, users that it needs and stuff i mean you can skip this particular warm-up as well if you wanted to which will do it once we are done with this particular execution but you will notice that once the execution is started it is going to give you quite a lot of information over here so you can see that it's going to tell you that this is going to be an HTTP load scenario and then this is going to keep in constant of zero and at the moment uh, the OK is zero, fail is zero and RPS is zero and there is a min, max and median operation for the particular execution and you will see that it is going to give you a .NET process metrics as well so every single thing is going to come up for you here automatically and now the test execution is going to happen for you and you can see that the currently the cpu usage is like 17.21 over here so if i open my activity monitor in my machine you can see that the cpu has spiked up over here which means it is currently loading up quite a lot of different um, memory within my machine so let's just wait for the execution to happen i think the default is just one minute if you don't specify the time and the test execution has completed successfully over here so you can see that there is going to be a report not only this console report that you are seeing over here but there is going to be a report for you as well so if i just go and open this particular report within my machine you can see that it's going to give me the details of what execution has happened over here so you can see that currently it has executed this many number of records it has passed in and these are the records which has got passed like all the records has got passed there is zero failure and it is all working fine for us without any problem which is great and you can also see that the status code is okay for this whole execution 
which is awesome, right? Like it's going to give us quite a lot of different information. At the moment, we have not added any plugin and there is no plugin data for me. That's the reason why these are all just empty. But you can keep on populating based on the complexity of the data that you are going to be sending in and stuff. And you can see that it's also showing you the CPU usage uh, and the data received and the data sent and thread pool memory work set and the memory GC heap size and stuff. Well, as that said, now we are created with this particular operation. I'm going to add some more spies in this particular code. What I'm going to do it is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to execute this scenario, but I'm going to do without warm up this time because you saw that it was a warm up coming up, right? So I don't want to do that. I'm also going to say that I want to do certain load simulation this time. So I wanted to do a load simulation for new inject, new pass, new inject random, new keep constant, new ramping constant, new ramping inject, new iterations for constant and new iterations for inject. So these are different ways that you can inject in the actual load for your test. So in this case, I'm going to say new inject over here and I can now inject as much as I can. I, for example, I wanted to inject 50 users and I wanted to inject in the time span of probably from minute, probably something like this to one minute. And I wanted to keep on doing this for probably one minute as well. So that's what I wanted to maybe not from minute uh, from uh, milliseconds um, I wanted to do like every 10 milliseconds I want to keep on injecting and I wanted to do it for a minute so I can just pass in the particular value and that's going to do the load simulations for me which is quite awesome right not only that we can also do certain assertions if I wanted to for instance once we run this whole execution I can just say var result so whatever result is just going to come after this execution of our test run, I can also assert based on the value which I'm looking for. So I'm expecting that every single time while my test execution complete, I also need to get the statistics out of this particular scenario which I'm executing. And then I'm going to get the name of the scenario, which is this one you remember, the HTTP load test. I'm going to pass it that over here and you can get the particular value. Uh, this one, the HTTP load test, if you remember. So now I'm going to verify if my latency is less than 800 milliseconds, right? So I wanted to verify that as well if it is happening all the time within my system. So I can do that over here. So I can just say dot. OK, so all the passing response and its latency and I'm going to set the percentage to be 99 percentage all the time that it is uh, less than probably 10 seconds, something like that. You know what I mean? Like this particular scenario should always be passing the latency of percentage 99, which means 99 percentage passing rate. And it should be less than 10 milliseconds. So you know that most of our time the execution is happening is actually far lesser than 10 milliseconds it's just like 0.2 milliseconds at the moment so this test is eventually going to pass for us over here as well so i'm going to go back to my terminal and then once i execute the test this time you'll notice that the warm-up did not happen this time because we have skipped the warm-up and now you'll also notice that this time it is keep on injecting the user every single millisecond and it is going to just bombard the execution until like 50 rate as you can see over here for one minute so that is what it is doing and you see that the cpu has now increased like 27 percentage this time which is spiked up quite a lot which is huge at least i have got quite a lot of memory within my machine so make sure that while you run this n bomber you have enough physical memory because i have 64 gb within my machine I can probably easily handle all these things while I'm recording this video. But there are cases that if the machine is not fast enough, this particular load test can hang your entire machine. There we go. Now that execution has completed and you can see that it has passed as well. And I'm going to go to my other window, just this one. And if I execute the HTML file, you can see that it's all passing as I told you. Uh, and you can see that the scenario is entirely passing. And the report is quite beautiful as well. It's not bad. You see that 
it has passed around 300000 request and 300000 request has got passed this time which is amazing so it's all working fine guys like i can see that it is entirely amazing to see how we can perform a load testing much much easily without writing quite a lot of code i mean you can keep on digging this entire code but in our next lecture i will see show you how we can also perform not only just the http load testing but also the web load testing using nbomber in much easier fashion hope you like the video if you really like that video please put your comments below that if you wanted to watch a specific scenario for load testing within your organization we can also discuss about that thank you